A whole lot of celebrities are about to be unemployed just like me. I am not exaggerating. This is not a joke. Let me get into this. First of all, hi. Welcome back to Nishi's Noggin, where I share with you what's on my mind. Now, have you heard about Blockout 2024? This is where folks on social media are actively blocking celebrities and influencers because we now know by viewing and engaging with their social media, it's basically like stopping them from getting that kind of income. The goal is to get everybody to focus on the horrible things that are happening in the world and specifically to get said celebrities and influencers to talk about it rather than ignore the issue. And I feel like this this became a bigger topic after events like the Met Gala. Like, especially after that, I think there were a lot of people that were like, what are we doing looking at these people in really fabulous outfits when there's a literal genocide that's happening? I'm going to be very real with you. This episode was supposed to be completely different. So like I did come into this, wanted to talk about my trip to India, which I am going to get to, but I wanted to tie that into celebrity stories because first of all, it's, that's just, it's what I've done. And it's also like what I've, always known. As a first generation Indian American, my way of connecting with people in America was by way of celebrity. I'm not an athlete. I am not handy. But honey, I love to gossip. Okay. So I know that I could sit down and I could have a kiki with anybody and talk to them about like, did you hear what happened with this A-list celebrity or this A-list celebrity? And it was just my way to connect. But it feels really weird to talk about these really ridiculously rich people when there are civilians that are dying by way of genocide, taking thousands of innocent lives and traumatizing generations. To have a platform and to not speak up, it is judge worthy. So I absolutely understand the purpose behind the block out 2024 movement. People are beginning to block celebrities and influencers and it's already working. Like this started popping off, I want to say like a couple days ago. By now I have already seen a response from Lizzo, from influencers like Chris Olsen and Brittany Broski who are speaking up now. Really, like I know that a lot of people are saying conveniently, but it's like, yeah, this is a result of th this boycott. You're getting people to talk about the things that are important. And it just means that it's working. Get our celebrities and influencers to talk about the things, what's going on with the people that are in Gaza, that's going on in Sudan, in Congo. And I'm sure that there are many places and communities that I'm not even mentioning right now and I should be aware of. But it, to be honest, it's because I'm caught up in my own life. I feel like I was caught up in my own life, caught up in celebrity culture and caught up in fear. I want to emphasize this. I think fear has been holding this conversation back or not letting it develop. I'm not going to call anybody out, but I know that at my previous regular job that I had, I will say I recall fear. Fear to the point of, of, of this topic of conversation, not knowing how to go about it, not knowing how to start it, not knowing what to support. And I mean, fear down to the point of can people see what I'm liking on social media? Can people see the comments that I'm liking? What is that going to do if people were to see that? Like, there's a lot of fear when it comes to this. So while like I understand it, I also understand that what I'm afraid of is not as important as what some of these people's life experiences are. It's not the same. My fear of somebody judging me is not the same as someone who's quite literally fearing for their life. And it's not just somebody, it's hundreds of thousands of people. I'm hopeful that community movements like this can move us towards like a better world. It's so wild to me to think that when I was younger, there was a movie that was in constant rotation at school. We had a couple movies on VHS. And one of them was Miss Congeniality, which is basically about a beauty pageant. And one of the jokes was how annoying the answer is to the question, what, what is, is the, the one most important thing our society needs? World peace. World peace. That's easy. World peace. World peace. That would be harsher punishment for a parole violator, Stan. And... World peace. Uh. 
Which I really want world peace. I want everyone to live and exist in peace and not in constant fear of their lives. And selfishly, it's because I want to be able to travel to all parts of the world. That is something that I have wanted as a goal of mine for a long time. But a huge part of that happening, again, I'm saying this selfishly, is that for everybody to live in their communities free of fear and in peace and in harmony with their lives, their communities, and their cultures. I am back from my trip to India and what's happening in the world. I am I am so thankful that I was able to go on this trip and to go with my family. It wasn't just to go and have fun. This was a very important trip for us to do with my father, my sister, and I. And I wanted to share with you some of my biggest takeaways. I'm, I'm going to give you my top six takeaways. Number one, driving is no joke in India. <laughs> Ooh, uh, we landed in India at midnight. Okay. I'm thinking we're getting picked up. We have a driver, by the way. That's the other thing. Like, this is a, I should have written this down, but like as a side note, you're going to have a driver when you're there. We weren't relying on Ubers and stuff. You have a dedicated driver. And that's not an uncommon experience for people that are like even middle class and up. So we get picked up by the driver and I'm thinking that the ride is going to be easy. Wrong. Honey, tell me why is all these trucks that are on the road, everybody is blaring on the horn like hardcore. And I'm like, it's... It's midnight. What's going on here? The driver ended up telling us that there was this rule that passed since the last time we were in India, which was when I was 10 years old, which might have been a couple decades ago. I'm having chest pain. I've fallen and I can't get up. He had said that there was this rule that trucks are not allowed to be on the road in the daytime to not obstruct with daytime traffic, which low key, low key, they're cooking with that rule. I would like to see it. I would like to see it happen in America, see what that does. But the traffic was crazy. And even besides like the trucks, like the other thing that I learned very quickly was that I'm going to give you an example. We're driving one way, one way. There's two lanes on this road just to go again, two lanes. Why was it five cars side by side? Why? Why was it? F <laughs> what the? <laughs> The lanes don't matter. Everybody's blaring on their horns, not even just the way that we do in America, where it's it's kind of like a, you're yelling at somebody. The horn is also to just let people know I'm here. It's kind of like, like I remember when I was a server and you just yell corner behind you, in front of you, to your left, da da da. Like that's what the horn was. I'm like, yo, this is this is a lot. To go back to us trying to get from the airport to the Airbnb, again, it's the middle of the night. So the other thing that, that happened is that we had to go four different routes to get to our Airbnb because apparently there's a bunch of random road closures that have been happening in the city of Delhi. And our driver said it's because this is election time. I don't know what that means, but he said it's election time. So a lot of the roads are getting closed off. That was a little scary, like to land right off the bat and to be like, are we, where are we going? Road closures means like it's barricaded. Like it's just blocked. I was like, oh, <laughs> what if we're blocked out of getting to our bed? Like I, we're going to get back to beds, but number two, food was fantastic. I feel like I've been seeing, especially on YouTube and TikTok, people doing videos like showing how awful like the hygiene is as far as like street food goes for places like India. And yeah, that is true. I was not participating in the street food. I got presented with sugarcane juice. I don't know what that is called, but I was presented with it. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. There's so many flies on that machine. I will not be consuming that. Thank you. You're welcome. But the food that I was eating, it was in restaurants or it was just being cooked and prepared. Wow. I grew up in an Indian household. So I grew up eating Indian food. I am aware of the amount of flavor that's in all of it. But like one of the things that I also know is that especially because this trip that we were on, we were in very religious areas. So 90% of the cuisine that we were eating was vegetarian, meaning it was a lot of carbs. Like it was very potato focused. And I could not believe how quickly I was getting full from the food. I'm a big boy, okay? In America, regularly, I'm at least going to clean my plate. I don't care where I am. I'm at least going to clean my plate. It doesn't matter how much food is on there. Usually is a lot. 
but I'm an at least one plate kind of person. I could not finish a plate of food in India. And it, I was, it was not a lot of food. I was, first of all, like blown away by that fact. Second of all, when I got back to America, my friend Ellie, I saw and I hung out with her and she was like, did you, did you lose weight? <laughs> how i was gone for two weeks i don't know if i lost weight but within the first few days of being back in america i could feel i felt like oh i'm regularly bloated here and it's not like my diet is that terrible bitch I don't know. It, it was very concerning. And that's like a whole other separate conversation. I was amazed at how good the food was, the food that I was eating and how my body reacted to it. I probably wasn't eating as many preservatives or additives. When I was eating a potato, it was a potato. Ugh, man, I, I'm gonna have to stop it there. Number three, being in India and again, walking in the particular places that we were in because I was in Delhi, Haridwar and Rishikesh. And Delhi is a big city, but Haridwar and Rishikesh are very like religious towns and cities. And when I was walking around there, it's animals just walking, roaming. For whatever reason, there's this like idea that, oh, you're Indian, so y'all just like respect cows. And I'm not saying that none of us do. I think there is like a small subculture of people that are cow worshipers. But to me, anybody who is fairly religious, we respect all the animals. Animals were roaming around freely with humans. It felt like I was in a game of Pokemon. I'm just looking at like, oh my God, <laughs> whoa, the cow is just right there. The horses are just right there. It's a peacock. I'm in the grass in the Pokemon game. What's going on? <laughs> and the gag is, is that everybody is just fine. Nobody's acting a fool. The animals aren't. Truly. Because in America, I feel like we... Uh, Everybody's relationship with dogs and cats is strange. Like people's relationships with animals are very weird. You'll see on social media, so many people creaming over these like sappy videos of animals. But then in real life, animals are sequestered to particular parts. Like it's either you're only allowed to be in this home or you're only allowed to be locked up in zoo exhibits. It's very inconsistent. I truly was in a real life Pokemon safari. Nobody cares. The monkeys, the peacocks, the cows, the dogs, the cats. I went on a walk in the morning and I could just hear all the animals waking up. Girl, <laughs> it was crazy. It was cool, but it was crazy. I said I was going to get back to the beds. Let's get back to the beds. The beds are different. Girl, not only are the bed frames by standard lower in India, these mattresses are, are thin. <laughs> these are thin, okay? And there was one, when I was staying in, in Haridwar, I felt like I'm sleeping on a box with a blanket over it. There's no way that there, there there's nothing under here. This is flat. And I know that that can be really good for you if you're laying on your back. I'm a stomach sleeper. So at certain points, this is uncomfortable. What I will say, I never woke up sore. That was weird to me. I felt really uncomfortable sleeping. It was uncomfortable in the sense that like, I'm not familiar with sleeping on this kind of surface, but my body was not sore when I woke up. I wake up, I, I sleep on this mattress. Any mattress in America that's really soft and cushiony, I'll wake up sore. That was random and interesting. Number five, power outages are a regular thing. Did not matter where we were. <laughs> it did not matter what we were doing, where we were. Nobody flinches. Now, I don't know about you, but when there's a power outage where I am in any place, any city that I've been in in America, everybody's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> mayhem. What are we going to do to get the power on? What am I supposed to do without power? Because without power, we have no Wi-Fi. Without Wi-Fi, we have no life. At least maybe that's just me. I'd be in restaurants and the power would just go out and, and everyone's like, okay, well, let's just keep on eating. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, and this might be like, I was kind of aware of the first five, because again, I've been to India before and I have family and friends that have been to India and are from India. I never noticed this and I never expected this. Number six, men holding each other's hands. This does not happen in America, but I'm talking about platonic friendly handholding everywhere. Men showing affection and appreciation in such an intimate way with other men, I've never seen it because this was not sexual. Like, this was not romantic. In fact, I was not seeing that with the married couples, like the straight married couples at all. I, I 
it was just so taken aback. Men holding each other's hands, resting on each other's shoulders, rubbing each other's backs. I'm like, what the, where, what is going on? I don't know what to make of it because while I really appreciate seeing people just being more like affectionate towards each other, I think that that's a super important thing. But in America, I do see couples showing PDA. Regardless of orientation, I see PDA happening. Didn't see that in India. That was the most striking thing to me because with all of that being said, I know it's not acceptable to be gay. So I'm like, y'all do some very... Is, is some very gay adjacent things that are happening here. And I would see some of my gays. You know, I, I could spot it. They were all being very calm, very not out there about it. I don't know. That was just the most interesting thing. Now, I am out of time, but I would love for you to stick around because in the next episode, I'm going to tell you how I was almost not able to come back into America. Yeah, your boy was almost stranded in London. I'm going to explain that to you on the next episode of Nishi's Noggin, but I want to thank you so much for coming in and joining us on this episode of Nishi's Noggin, where I share with you what's on my mind. For folks that are on YouTube, if you could hit the like button, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you have any questions, stuff that you might want to know about my trip for the next episode. Also, if you can subscribe, if you haven't already, that would be great. Shout out to my podcast listeners. I keep getting emails from my distributor that's just like, like, you've hit this milestone. You've hit that milestone. I'm like, I'm not even promoting this. That's crazy. So thank you so much for listening. I love that we can continue having these chats, these conversations with each other. So thank you so much for joining. Until we see each other next or talk to each other next. Bye. Why is the truck? Girl.